In the previous videos, we've used a sine function to simulate the motion of a ball on a spring. So now the ball is moving up and down, and uh, this will continue uh, for as long as we like. Uh, I'm going to add a forever loop so that we'll just make this go continually. And now it'll move up and down. When a tone is sent to the computer uh, speaker, the tone moves the cone of the speaker back and forth in a motion that's very similar to the pattern that you've seen here. So if I switch over to the uh, costume area and I change the the, the uh, appearance of the turtle from a ball to a speaker, let me just uh, set the size down a bit so that now we have a figure. We can use this to simulate the motion of a cone of the speaker that would occur when we send a sine wave to the speaker. I'm not going to want it to go quite as far, so I'm going to move it up and down 10 steps instead of 100. And I'd like it possibly to move a little bit faster, so I'm going to change it away to about a 20th of a second. When I do that, then I get something very, very similar to the motion that occurs as the sine wave moves the speaker cone back and forth. Um, I can pause this for a second and make it move even a little faster to get the illusion of this movement. Let's try a hundredth of a second. And we uh, can take a video of a moving a movement of a uh, subwoofer and move it back and forth very slowly and we'll see a very similar motion. In this video we can see the bass guitar string moving back and forth very slowly and we also see the cone of the subwoofer moving back and forth at the same rate. It's clear that the cone is pulsing in and out and in fact the rate of vibration and the pattern of vibration is very similar to that in the simulation because in both cases uh, a sine wave is driving the motion.